My name is Alison Cox and I founded CRY nearly 17 years ago. And we're talking today to our new patron, Lawrence Okoye, who is hoping to be in the Olympic team and be throwing the discus for us. And he's been screened today, haven't you, Lawrence? Yes. So that's why we managed to catch a moment of your time. Lawrence, you're very young to have achieved so much in discus throwing. Everything I read tells me that you don't start maturing as a discus thrower until you're in your late 20s and early 30s, yeah. and you're only just 20. Yeah. Does the phenomenal rate of progress that you've made over the last 12 months or so, does it all seem a bit surreal sometimes? Um. Not to me, because um, I wouldn't have done it if I didn't think I could be where I'm at at the moment. Uh, because I had to take a big choice in my life and decide what I was going to do, uh, whether, go down to, whether I was going to go down the rugby route or to go straight to university. And then this opportunity came and I wouldn't have taken it if I didn't think I could achieve what I have achieved and more in the time that I had allocated, which was two years to get it done. So in the last six months now, I've got no another six months to finish my, finish my target finish my um, finish my mission and then get to the games and hopefully do well there and um, and complete what's been obviously a, a great couple of years for me. So are you suggesting that if you don't achieve what obviously is the very high target you've set yourself then you might consider not carrying on doing the discus? Um, I think in some ways it would be slightly foolish to do that because of like you say the years I have ahead in the sport you know, I'm at the age of 20 to be ranked in the top 10 in the world means that there's a lot more to come and far more bigger performances to come for me. So in that sense, it would be a bit foolish, but then again, I don't think that will happen. I think I will achieve my goal, so I'm not really worried about that. That's fantastic. Yeah. And how do you think it's going to feel if you do? Um, do you not think about actually no, having I, done I, it? You're I, just aiming at doing it? Yeah, definitely. I think mm. I just got to take it each day as it comes. And it's important to think about each day and make sure you give 100% to each training session you, you do in each, each throwing session throwing session you do and pay attention to your nutrition every day that's what's going to get you to your goal not thinking about the goal you know so I haven't thought too far forward. Yes that, well you're thinking very very ambitiously from day to day and my experience of top athletes uh, such as it is suggests to me that there are three things that you need one is the talent another is the discipline and I think perhaps what's often underestimated is the ability to prioritize what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And it suggests to me that you've got very good ability to prioritize the goals, the structure of how you achieve that, and all the things around that. Would you say that you probably have never been a person who's had difficulty in sorting out what you need to do at the right time? Yeah, that's quite accurate, I think, because when I was at school, you know, going to a tough, you know, a, a, a tough, a good school where you have to do well academically, and I wanted to achieve a lot in sport. I had to, you know, prioritise my, my, my life really, and make sure I did my work when I needed to, and, and I trained as hard as I could when I needed to, and that's carried through to what I'm doing now. So, you know, um, training is my number one priority, and you know, that's that, that's the way it should be if I want to achieve what I want to achieve. So it's, it's having that winning attitude that, you know, you want to achieve something. So you've got to, you know, set yourself right down and have it always in your head what you have to do to do that and carry and that through. And have the discipline to do and it. And that's the discipline to do it. So yeah. luckily things are going the right way as, as we speak and, you know, hopefully they will keep going the right way. In a way, you must seem as if you've got a lot of time. You've been, after all, taking your academic studies right to the maximum in terms of getting your place at Oxford, studying, uh, got an opportunity to study law, which is must be an extraordinarily competitive uh, academic environment to have been working with, and yet you've achieved what you have at the same time in parallel with your sport. Yeah, it's so extraordinary. I'm, I'm scheduled to start there this this summer. Yes. Uh, um, this this autumn after the game, so. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's great that I, that's there and that I've, you know, I've been able to just set my mind on training and not have to worry about anything else. But um, that, that comes back into play, prioritising things when I do go to university. So I do want to carry on with my sport, obviously. Um, so it will be important for me to, to keep, keep, have that discipline again to make sure I do what I need to do. But um, it's, great. it's great that I'm in this position and, and uh, I've had incredible opportunities in my life and I'm very lucky to you know to be in the position that I am at so because of that I have to make sure I do the right things and don't waste it because there are 
doubt millions of kids out there who could be doing what I'm doing, which just don't have the opportunity. So and maybe yeah. don't have the discipline or ability to prioritise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it suggests not. to me that it's almost a luxury for you now, having managed that whole process of keeping your academic studies going and challenging yourself. It is a luxury. Your sport. Yeah. It's a luxury now to be able to just do your sport. Yeah, I, I think you're absolutely right. I think um, because it is a luxury mm. to have this lifestyle and to be able to you know pursue your dreams and live out your dreams there are no excuses and you must do it the right way and that's why I'm improving well because you know I've been able to give everything I've got and when you do that you're you're going to improve and luckily I'm and improving. it sounds to me as if you're able to take full responsibility for yourself whereas yeah. of course a lot of people it's very easy to resort to excuses because they're afraid of failing no it doesn't seem to me it's within your repertoire at all no it's just it's, I've got everything I need to do well you know I've got a good coach good setup good support great backing talent, discipline, opportunity, you know, there's no reason for failure, as long as I don't get injured <laughs> or yeah, so have a heart problem. Well, <laughs> what would be your message for others about screening, both athletes and non-athletes? Do you have anything you particularly... Well, for me personally, it's a, it's a big issue because um, a, young, a young child from my school actually died um, from a heart problem out from nowhere and uh, we used to play basketball together and uh, you know, I used to see him around school, he was a bit younger than me but um, to see to see that happen, you know, to someone that you know you see every day, it's a big wake up call. And I think, you know, 99% of the time nothing's wrong, but there's absolutely no reason why you wouldn't check. You know, um, it makes sense to to have a look and just to make sure that nothing's wrong. And it's great for me as an athlete because as I'm pushing my heart every day to work yeah. hard to make sure that it's functioning properly, and that's great news for me. And I'm really pleased that the screening is positive. So. And is that one of the reasons you became a cry patron? Because we're ever so proud to have you. Yeah, because yeah, it's just it's an actual real connection there. And I think it makes sense um, for me to get involved because of um, what's happened, obviously, at my school with a young young child and my connections with sport. So mm -hmm. I think it's important that we all take notice and and um, just it doesn't take any you know it's, it's not a big deal just to go have a look and that could save your life. What did you feel like before you were going to be screened? Oh, I wasn't nervous or anything. So I was, you you know, never get nervous. No, so <laughs> no, it was um, just like it's a it's ninety nine ninety nine ninety nine percent of the time it's fine. Mm. So you know I wasn't worried at all, and luckily I had no reason to be worried. Yeah. And so what we're looking at is you are 20 years old. Uh, you've had massive attention, and it's only going to get more massive. Uh, you're the poster boy for the London Olympics. We've uh -huh. all seen your fantastic uh -huh. picture outside Big Ben. And uh, you're so cool. We saw how cool you were at the parliamentary reception uh -huh. that we have in uh, the autumn with yeah. the MPs in the House of Commons. One of the youngest people in the room. Yeah. Uh, and didn't phase you at all and in any mm. way. It's hard to believe anything would ever phase you. Yeah. How do you f handle all this? Is it just something that you deal with? Um, like, like I say, I'm so lucky to be in the position I, that I'm in. So you can't worry about you know, m minor things, and things that aren't important. You just get on with what you're doing, enjoy what you're doing, and you should be happy and you shouldn't be worried about things. So that's, that's, that's the position I'm in at the moment. I've got no problems. You know, there's so many people in the world that, you know, have such a different life to the one I have. So I'm pleased with how things are going. So there's no reason to get worried about speaking in front of a few, few, few people about something that, that's meaningful, you know, or, you know, worrying about posing in front of a big band, you know. <laughs> it's not, it's not going to kill you, so. Extraordinary that you can just take all this in your stride, but it does suggest to, I'm sure anybody who's listening or, or watching, I think it would tell most of us that you really have life in a very strong um, sense of perspective, and that's going to be the thing that is possibly going to help you as much as anything else. Yeah, I think sometimes young people just, you know, just, they have, they have everything. They just, you know, don't see the bigger picture sometimes and just see that, um, life is just for living and you don't need to get caught up in certain things that are going on and, and just keep keep moving forward and you know live out your dreams and because we have the opportunity to do it and that's important so it's important we take it Lawrence it's fantastic to have you here today thank you very much and thank you so much for joining us no worries it's a pleasure we're very proud to have thanks you thanks very much thank you and best thanks for looking after my heart yeah definitely